Welcome friends to the Muskrat Link Simulator. You guys are used to me out on muskrat links playing our foam ball golf or doing some trick shots here on the simulator and playing through some cool courses uh, but today i want to showcase the simulator itself show you guys what we built here in the garage at muskrat links so you can build one at your house if you're looking to build a simulator and show you how you can do it cheaply and safely if you guys are new to the channel or if you haven't heard of foam ball golf before be sure to subscribe we got lots of other cool stuff like that on the channel but today is going to be all about the simulator so let's check it out and see how we built it let's start out by talking some numbers so obviously i'm going to show you guys how we built the simulator for muskrat links specifically but in case you're looking to build one yourself let's talk about some of the basics to see what you might need so for starters you need at least 10 to 12 feet between where you're going to be hitting to where your impact screen is uh, just to be safe depending on what launch monitor you get you might not need the full 10 to 12 feet for it to read like obviously the sky track only needs a couple feet right in here to read ball flight but if you're getting a mevo plus or some different you know overhead launch monitor or something like that you might need more ball flight for it to get accurate readings 10 to 12 feet is more than enough to be safe so that's kind of what we went with here i think this is it's about 11 and a half feet from here to the screen, which is great for me. There's no bounce backs off the screen, but part of that is because of the tension we put on the screen anyway, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Another measurement that you're gonna to need to know when building a simulator is the ceiling height. Obviously, you're gonna be swinging pretty high and the general recommendation is 10 foot ceilings for a minimum. The ceilings in here are, I believe, nine feet, 10 inches, so essentially a 10 foot ceiling, which is more than enough for me. Uh, you can get away with stuff down as low as nine feet or even like eight and a half feet if you don't swing drivers or if you're really short. For me and all my friends, everybody is a righty that I know uh, and everybody is basically under six foot five, so I have no issues with everybody swinging in here and keeping everything on this right hand side. We play a little bit offset to the center line because all of my friends are a righty, but that's something you're going to want to consider as well uh, if you're going to have different people over who are lefties and righties. On that topic, the width of our simulator is about 10 feet. So the tarps I picked out here, which we'll talk about later, are 10 feet by 12 feet. So the width here is approximately 10 feet, which gives you, again, more than enough room to swing a club. And I even kind of tacked back this edge here to give me a little bit more room to swing, which is perfect for the garage. One final measurement that's gonna be important is the distance between your impact screen and the wall behind it. Again, the general recommendation is minimum one foot distance between the two. I'm getting away with a lot less here. I have about eight or nine inches between the impact screen and the back wall. I'll show you guys some footage of what I have behind here, but obviously we have the impact screen, our curtain cage tarps here, and there's another kind of tarp layer behind it. One thing you can do if you're running on little space like I am, is you can put foam mattress toppers behind your impact screen as well, and that will help stop the balls from making it to the wall. I haven't had a single ball hit the wall yet behind her, even if they go low and go under, so we've done a really good job kind of making this a safe area where nothing's gonna ricochet or kick around. Obviously, one of the important things you're gonna to wanna to consider when building a simulator is price. So I wanted to build something that was cheap. I didn't want to buy any of like the out of the box things that were several thousand dollars. I wanted to save a little bit of money by doing it myself. Um, so I was looking for cheap options and I was looking for really safe options. Safe is the key for me because I have golfers of all different skill levels using this. So whatever I built had to be able to withstand shanks, tops, sky marks, everything needed to be completely enclosed so I didn't have balls bouncing around my garage. So that's why I chose the material that I did. So like I said earlier, we went with four 10 foot by 12 foot tarps. These are kind of all weather tarps that I got from Lowe's, I think. I'll put the, the link on the screen anyway for you guys. 
And what we did is we bought some sailor's thread and used a back stitch to stitch all of these tarps together. So it essentially makes a giant cube here with one end open. And of course the floor is open as well. That's not tarp that completely encases the golf shot. So anything that goes here is going to get stopped by um, the threads that we made. So it's going to be completely sewn shut with a little bit of a hole here and there that we can let some of our uh, anchors through. So we've got some tensioning on the screen here using bungee cords and the screen itself is actually out through some grommets we added to the top and I'll show you guys that in a second to attach to the ceiling. With safety as one of our concerns, we want to make sure we didn't have any balls going under the screen since our screen doesn't make it all the way to the ground here. There's about, I don't know, seven or eight inches of distance between the bottom of the screen and the floor. So what we ended up coming up with is we got these foam tiles, of course, which you guys will see later, we installed in the floor. And then behind that, we've got these wooden kind of subfloor two by two plates, and I have them pitched up at an angle up against the back wall. That way, if any ball comes in low and fast that would otherwise go under the screen, it actually hits this and either bounces up into the screen or goes just under and bounces up behind the screen. This is great because that means there are no ricochets at all that can possibly come back to the golfer. Everything just bounces straight up into the screen or straight behind it, which is perfect. For our impact screen, I ended up going with a square impact screen. So this is a nine by nine area. Um, we end up using about, I don't know, probably like 70% of it is covered with the actual image from our projector, which you guys will see. Um, but I really like this. I thought having the extra space at the top might bother me a little bit, but it really doesn't bother me at all. I only see kind of the top of the image when we're playing. Uh, if that would bother you, what you can do is you can hang a black sheet down, you know, however many feet it takes to get to the top of your image. But I would highly recommend the square impact screen because that means you can rotate it four different times if you start to wear out the area where you're hitting. So because we're off center a little bit for righties, all of our shots are hitting kind of this right third of the screen. But because it's a square, we can just take it, rotate it this way, wear it out again on this side, rotate it again and rotate it again. So that's going to give us a lot more life than your average screen. Uh, obviously, this is not a super expensive screen. It's not a budget screen either. It is meant to be an impact screen. Um, I think I got this when it was on sale a little bit, so it only cost me like a hundred and something dollars. Again, you guys will see on the screen. Because we had to keep it inside the cage, obviously we had a problem of how do we secure it inside the cage without making holes that golf balls could go through, right? So I'll show you some footage of this, but what we essentially did is we cut a bunch of grommet holes in the top layer of the cage. Uh, added the grommets themselves, and then fed bungee cords out those grommets. So our screen is actually attached through the grommets in the screen, out the grommet holes in the tarp that we added, up into the ceiling over eye hooks that are attached to the beams in the ceiling. So it's really been perfect. The impact screen just hangs from the ceiling. We've got a couple extra bungee cords for tension down on the corners and on the sides, and it makes for a perfect impact really, and the screen stays flat enough that the image still looks great. We actually just upgraded our projector as well from an old, old 720p, I think it was a Mitsubishi XD490U, which came from some school some time ago, which was great, but it, it turned itself off every now and then, and that's not super helpful. So we bought a different projector, which I'll talk about in a little bit. It's 1080p, it works so much better, and it looks so much nicer than the old one, so I'm really happy with that. Now that we've talked about the impact screen and the cage we've built to make this as safe as possible, let's move on to the hitting area itself. So what I ended up doing is, again, I spent a little bit extra money here, but I think it's well worth it. I bought the Gung Ho Golf Holy Grail hitting strip. You can make a hitting strip yourself for a little bit less money. I went with the, the pre-made one just to get some guarantees. Um, but this is really important because you want something that's not going to injure you. If you're going to be taking a lot of swings in here, you know, hundreds and thousands of golf balls, you need something that's not going to wear out your joints, your wrists, your arms, your elbows. That's all stuff that's going to wear down if you're hitting off of a subpar mat. So I spent a little bit extra money on this. You can spend more money and buy an entire stance mat built out of, you know, really nice putting turf as well. Um, but I kind of took a middle road and built up a stance mat myself. So we've got some puzzle piece foam here. So these are Eva foam tiles, um, 3 8 inch thick, 1 half inch thick. And then I got a cheap stance mat off of eBay, I think it was. And that made our kind of stance mat once we glued everything together. 
Uh, again, I didn't really choose the foam tiles for any reason other than the math worked out where it would be perfectly flush with the Holy Grail. Um, so I put a little bit of work into figuring that out beforehand, but again, it worked out great because I saved a lot of money not buying an expensive stance mat, but buying a slightly more expensive hitting strip that's going to keep my joints safe. The way this connects into the rest of the floor is really cool as well because I use the foam puzzle pieces throughout it. This whole thing just comes out and hooks up to the floor. You guys will have seen in the uh, intro bit or in the part where we're sliding everything out and putting it all together. Uh, this hooks up really nicely and I bought this cheap mat from Home Depot just to make it look a little bit more like a green. On top of that, we've got our sky track in its own little mat next to our hitting area. You generally don't want your sky track on the exact same area where you're going to be swinging because you might jostle it or move it. So I cut a little rectangle of this stance mat off of the stance mat itself and I've just got it placed next to it on its own little puzzle piece mat that way it doesn't move at all. Um, one of the great things about this design actually is there's no movement with the stance mat because it's all hooked up together. There's so much weight going through it when it's all put together that it stays down really nicely and it's a nice firm hitting surface that isn't going to slide around your garage. And when we need to take it down and take it apart, we just rip up all the puzzle pieces, which are nice and light individually, toss them all aside and we're good to go. So to demonstrate some of the safety features of the simulator, I'm going to take a couple shots into the sides and the top and the bottom just to show you guys how it performs for some of those worst shots you can hit. I'm going to start things off with a four iron and we're going to test a ball kind of into this side netting here. Obviously, one of the things that is going to be important is making sure there's nothing really close to the side netting. Obviously, if there was something like right here I could hit, that's obviously going to be a safety concern. But we've got plenty of room here and it's tense enough that it's not going to go all the way out to hit this metal thing. At least I hope not. We'll find out. It hasn't happened yet. Here goes nothing. No problem. The screen caught that, ate it up, spit it right down here. I think it actually caught the side of some of this wood on its way out. Because I have all righties that use the simulator, there's never really any way the left side can get hit. I mean, I guess if you like topped one bad enough, you could kind of send one over there. But again, it's not really something that's a threat to us. As for the top and the bottom, that's definitely something that gets hit a lot more frequently because it's pretty easy to thin something low and have it hit this wood that's angled up at the front here. And when you're hitting high wedges like 56s and 60 degrees, you can easily hit the ceiling before you hit the screen. So I'll show you how some of those shots work. All right, let's try to put one over the screen and you guys can see how it reacts when it goes over the impact screen, but still gets caught by our cage. There we go, perfect example. So that hit the screen just above here. It went back behind the impact screen, rolled all the way down the back and almost came out the front past our little wooden angles. I suppose it's worth mentioning now how well these little wooden angles work, not just for deflecting low shots, but for sending the balls back to us after they've hit the impact screen. I mean, it works perfectly. Things hit the screen, they generally fall down, they hit the wood and roll right back up to the front where we're hitting it. I mean, you can't really ask for more. Hello. All right, the next test is gonna be a little scary, but I will try to hit a low hard shot that hits off this wood here. Again, it's something you're gonna to wanna to consider when you're making this as safe as possible. There we go, perfect example. Hits the boards somewhere up in here, bounces up into the screen, and comes rolling harmlessly back to us. That's a great example of how this system works, and I'm really happy with the way I designed it, just because, I mean, it's simple, it's cheap, and it works really well, and it's safe. That's the most important part. So you've seen now that the simulator is very safe, the enclosure's perfect for golfers of all skill levels. I'm really, really happy with it. It's come out great and it proves that you can build a high-tech simulator that's lightweight, that retracts so you can still fit a car in your garage for really around $750. Uh, I've got the prices of everything on the screen. Hopefully you guys have been seeing that pop up as we've been going through this video. So I think what we'll do is we'll get in, we'll play a couple holes on the simulator. I'll be using the SkyTrack here in conjunction with TGC 2019 to play a couple holes of golf for you and just see how it looks. We are out here at Payne's Valley, hole number 10. We'll just play around a little bit and see how we do. Obviously, one thing you guys probably read online is, you know, how long is the delay between when the SkyTrack reads your shot and when your software actually shows a shot on the screen. I found it's basically not a factor at all because usually I hit my shot, 
I think about it for a second, I grab my ball wherever it lands, and then I look up and my ball's already in midair. So you guys will see in a second, the delay is probably like eh, two-ish, two and a half seconds maybe on this computer. Here we go. All right, there we have it. Ball is up in the air. A little bit much of a fade on that one, but not too bad of a shot at all. Uh, chipping, Skytrack tends to do pretty well on, so we'll get to see that next. All right, little 14 yard chip here. We've got our 56 degree. Gonna put this just in front of the dot. See if we can get this close. I think we've got six foot gimmies on, so maybe I can get it inside that range, or maybe I can show you guys a little bit of the putting. There goes nothing. Okay, almost no putting needed, <laughs> almost hold it out. But hey, we'll take that, that was dead online, nice straight shot, read perfectly by the Skytrack, on to the next hole, I guess. One thing that you could potentially get is a control box, you don't have to walk over to your computer. That's something I might get in the future, but for now, I've got the computer close by. That's probably the hardest thing to move out of this whole setup. So if I wanted to pull my car into the garage on this side, I'd have to move that table. Um, but you can definitely get my wife's car in here, no problem, even with this whole thing set up. So I can actually leave this whole setup here in its current state, and we can still have one car in the garage. So that's one of the benefits of going this way in the garage versus going this way. It just worked out great for me because I didn't have to move any of my garage door rails or the motor or anything like that. The motor's not really in play. I suppose you could hit this in theory, but I mean, it really shouldn't happen. It's not exactly in play. So because I've got the room to set it up sideways in the garage, it works absolutely perfectly. So computer's right there. We got our setup. We are on hole number 11 now, which is a 410 yard par four up the hill, a little bit, 12 feet, slight dog leg to the left, driver in hand. Let's see, 260 yards, I'd be pretty happy with if we can get it out that far up the hill. Not too bad at all. A little bit of a fade tailing over there. Carried it 254, I think. Bobbling up there, 273, 274. Beautiful. And of course, we get our little post shot analytics here, which I have set to last for, I think it's three seconds. You can change that in the settings, of course, to be whatever you want. All right, got another mid iron for you guys here. We're gonna go with a nine iron. I think I can get it there. If anything, I'm gonna be a little short, but that's quite all right. Uh, we're gonna leave it aimed right at the pin because again, my natural little fade is just gonna put us in the front right part of the green, which is away from danger. So we will give it a run. Not too bad, good looking ball flight. Just about the right number as well. Hold right there. All right, that's a tidy looking shot. Struck it well, ended up pretty close to the hole. Beauty. One of the reasons why I went with the Skytrack over Mevo Plus or some of the other launch monitors in this kind of money category is it reads putts pretty well. I don't really have to fiddle with anything. I can just set it up and go. I wanted a simulator where I could actually putt things out and feel them and feel the distance for the putts. This works really well for that. I can't recommend it enough. So from what I found, I set my greens to slow in game because that kind of is about the stimp of this area from what I could find. So we're looking at a 16 foot putt here, which for me is gonna be about right at the top of the ramp. I could probably get away with just hitting the impact screen a little bit, but that's kind of about the distance of the putt we want. And for putts, I generally put the ball about two inches back behind the red light. It doesn't really matter. It just needs to roll through uh, that laser curtain of the sky track. So we'll give this a roll and you guys can see how it reacts. That was a little firm, so I think we're gonna go a little bit by the cup here, unless we hit it in the middle. Yeah, a little bit too firm, but it played out exactly like we thought. Um, again, that's gonna be a six foot gimme, so we are in for par. Nice little hole. I have the straight putting mod turned on for this, that way it doesn't read left and right, because the Skytrack doesn't do a fantastic job of noticing little differences left to right on putting. So instead of wrestling with it, I just set the straight putting mod turned on, which is standard for any kind of online player tournaments as well. Um, that way the ball always goes straight. I have to aim it on the green myself manually with the controls, and then I have to get the speed right on my putt. So there's a little tip for you guys.
That's pretty much it here. If you guys have questions, please let me know down in the comments below. I'm happy to answer anything. And one tip I have for you guys is make sure you look at the Golf Simulator forums. I spent so much time on there long before I built the simulator, just doing research and checking what posts are happening every day, who was responding to what. You can learn so much information about building a golf simulator from that website. I can't recommend it enough. So do go over and check that website out. Again, uh, we've got some great content coming out for you guys in the upcoming weeks. We've got a few more good weeks of weather outside here in New England before we start heading into winter and we start heading into the simulator more full time. I've got one really, really good video coming up in a couple weeks for you guys, maybe like two weeks time. See all those balls lined up over there? We're going to be doing a 50 shot challenge where if I don't hit the green, my ball gets chopped in half. It's going to be awesome, so stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe. Again, if you haven't heard of foam ball golf, that's what we normally do out on the course here at Muskrat Links in the backyard. But again, if you guys have any SkyTrack questions or anything about this simulator, I'm happy to answer for you guys. Let me know down in the comments. Make sure to subscribe. Have fun out there, everyone.